Welcome back to Civil Met Backstage at Aurora Prize. I'm here at UWC Dilly John with my guest, Lori Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. Lori is the editor of the International Journal of Migration and Integration based out of Canada. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. So I want to get started by asking you what sort of things you cover at the journal. So our journal uh, focuses on worldwide migration. So we get uh, papers from um, all around the world, people researching various aspects of why people move. So many of, much of our papers are on international moves, but um, we have a special focus that other journals don't have. Um, most of the other journals have an academic focus. Our focus is also academic, but as a requirement for the journal, you also have to put in some policy recommendations mm -hmm. or best practices into your uh, paper because our readership, uh, which is about 8,000 uh, subscribers, um, are not exclusively academics. So people who work in the immigration field to help people resettle um, and governments that help resettle them also read our, our um, journal and so that's why um, we're a bit different than the other academic journals. And can you give me a sense of how your coverage has changed in the past few years as Canada is dealing with the Syrian refugee <clears throat> crisis and other refugee crises? So our journal is international, so we get a lot of papers from around the world. So um, it's changed largely because of the, the attention to the Syrians. Researchers, though, um, it takes a little bit of time to, right. cal to calculate data, get the, get the uh, analysis done. And so we're just starting to see some of the um, brand new papers that are coming out on, on the Syrian refugees, but also the worldwide refugee crisis. And what sort of discussions have you been involved in this weekend at the Aurora Prize? And um, you know, what has been your impression of Armenia so far? Um, well, this weekend I've only been here for a day and I've already talked about um, Argentinian politics and American politics and uh, how we uh, collectively, how governments um, can or don't um, choose to mm. integrate people. So um, I think that's been really eye-opening. I've met journalists, business people, um, NGO leaders, um, politicians, that sort of thing. So it's been really enriching. And what sort of role do you think Aurora has to play in starting these discussions and also inspiring people to take action? Well, I think they're already doing a good job considering this is only year two. Right. And uh, it's my understanding that the conference itself is doubled in size and the number of people who have been nominated for the Aurora Prize has more than doubled. Um, so I think you know getting the word out is, is great because there's so many people who do fantastic work um, in the field of resettlement and integration that, that you know they need to, to be recognized for their humanitarian work and there's not many opportunities to, to celebrate the really excellent work that, that gets done that is so needed in our, in our right. world. Um, and can you talk about some takeaways that you've had from your experience here so far and um, maybe some you know, contributions that you've brought from your work to Aurora? You know, one of the things that I always try to reflect on, especially when I'm in a different country, is um, how much of my knowledge is really embedded in my own country and how things maybe I take for granted don't necessarily happen the same way. Mm. Um, so I had a very in interesting conversation this, this morning uh, with somebody who you're about to interview, um, and he was talking about how his government lies about immigrants, how they try to tie them to criminal activity when in fact you know, immigrants in his country are way less likely to commit crime. And when I was listening to that, I thought, to, you know, in my country, my government, you know, the governments change and some governments are more appreciative of immigrants than others, but it doesn't matter who's in power. They always have led um, academics like me um, access to their data so that I can analyze the data um, in a way that's, I feel, ethical and, and scientific, but they never tell me how to tell my story. <clears throat> and so my goal is always to tell a truthful story. Um, and to give um, people who are in the field truthful information that will help them you know, debunk the myths about refugees, for instance. Um, and so I, as he was talking about how his government you know, bends the statistics to make it sound right. like immigrants are bad people, in my country it's not like that. And, and so I, I'm grateful to that, um, but it also changed my mind about how I, how I see the way that governments um, share data because sometimes it's not very truthful. And how do you think Canada's role has changed on the global stage as um, 
more and more countries deal with migration and refugee issues. Um, well, uh, folks like me, the, their phones are ringing off the hook with right, people from around the world asking questions about you know, how do we do things, where, how, is, how is it that we're successful largely in integrating people. Um, so I think we're busier. Um, I think we need to be open to um, ideas from other countries too because we can learn from everyone because um, there's always something good going on somewhere that, 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 you know, if we can incorporate those ideas, we can make it a better place in Canada too. So, um, so we've been really busy. People in my field have been really busy in the last two years trying to trying to get out the message actually, even just to the average person doesn't really know much about refugees. And right. so we've been really busy trying to, to figure that out and try to get the message across in a way that people, normal people can understand. And how do you create those narratives for normal people to understand? <laughs> it depends, right? So um, we can make the humanitarian argument, um, which is easy for us to make, especially the people at the Aurora uh, conversation, because that's the field that we're in. Right. But I found that that message doesn't resonate with everybody. So the problem is, is that um, there's a small group of people who are really racist and or really, really scared. They think that um, new people will come in and change the culture and the language and the religion. And, you know, in my country, Canada won't be the same. That group of people is a small group of people, but it's becoming more vocal. Mm. So we've got the humanitarians on one side. We've got this small group of vocal people on the other side. But in the middle is this vast group of people who I'll just call the neutral people. They don't know much about refugees, maybe scared to ask, listening to the hardline racist people, but also trying to listen to the humanitarians and the NGOs who work in the community. And so I feel it's my job to try to educate that middle group of people. Um, and I find that if you spend some time talking to them about the humanitarian aspect, that's important, but also talking about the contributions that immigrants and refugees make to our society. Right. So simple things like, you know, on uh, over the lifetime, because most people migrate before their 30th birthday, they're going to have a huge, long labor market um, experience in my country. And so even though it's really expensive to bring people here and, and set, help them settle, in the long term, they're going to pay more in taxes. Um, they come more healthy, so they're not going to have as many health problems um, as, as they did. Um, so the, pay, the, the taxes that they pay over the lifetime will be more than the money that Canadians put towards them to bring them here in the first place. So they're an economic positive for my country. That message doesn't get out very often. Mm. Um, and so that's a message that resonates with people. Um, the other re message that resonates is, you know, if we talk about um, crime rates and, and terrorism because we hear about that kind of stuff, if you, if you bring the data to the people, they'll, they'll begin to understand like there's no connection between being an immigrant and a terrorist or being a refugee and a terrorist. And that um, in my country and in most other countries, because of the selection process, it's very um, likely that um, immigrants and refugees have significantly lower crime rates than people who are born in Canada. And so if you bring that kind of data and that kind of factual evidence, you're not going to you're not going to uh, convince the racist people. That that kind of evidence is not going to resonate with that group of people, but that huge group of people in the middle mm -hmm. who just doesn't, you know, want to want to learn a little bit more, too scared to ask questions. Um, that's the group of people that are highly influenceable and educationable. Mm -hmm. um, and and can, we can bring them over to to the side of being more accepting. Well, Lori, it's been so wonderful talking with you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Armenia at the Aurora Prize. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.